I've really I've come to the conclusion that if you are successful in the music business, you have somehow sold out. We have stayed more true to ourselves than than anybody could have asked us to. The original fan base would argue that Break the Cycle, as big of a record as it was, was the beginning of the end of us, you know, being represented as a heavy band. A lot of people that know us from the radio are quite taken aback when they come and see us play live. And, you know, that's part of the whole thing that was created by the record label and by what radio wanted from us. And I always felt like it was a misrepresentation of what Stained was as a whole. So this is the perfect opportunity for Stained to get back to being. I feel like this is the opportunity for Stained to get back to where we were at in the beginning where all we wanted to do was fucking write heavy songs and just fucking kick people's fucking teeth down their throat. <laughs> So we decided we were going to start the record um, early December. Uh, before we did that, we really had to put the studio together. Um, so Johnny K came up and we had bought all this gear and, you know, spent almost a week, I guess, everything, getting everything together and started jamming on the ideas. How you doing, kids? Because they recognize me. I know, he's oh, got the whole thing. Oh, I hear him smart. What's happening, bro? Are you wearing a wig under there? I just caught up. I just caught up. What's going on, bud? see you. We broke right before Christmas, and at that point we had about, I think about 18 songs that we had put together um, in a couple of weeks. And uh, so everybody took the break, came back and started playing on it, and kind of chose the ones that we liked, went through them. I think both Aaron and myself realized that we needed to make some changes to some of them. Um, went through it song by song and started doing that, and you know, started working on them. On the last record, Mike was using a lot of more standard tunings, uh, but originally Stained, and most of the records were always played on baritone guitars and with, uh, you know, down-tuned and drop-tuned guitars. So Mike wanted to return to that, and I think the band in general wanted to make a heavier record. What Stain needs to do is to really focus on what first got people into Stain, which was a large portion of their audience, a large portion of their fan base, came on board during uh, the tormented or dysfunction period. And I said, go back to ch channeling that energy and make a record that is a hard record and an honest record. And challenge yourselves to do that. I think, yeah, if you want to sound modern and progressive, have some cool parts and transitions. No, I can give a fuck about sounding fucking modern and progressive. It's not like Stain. The more popular records with the die-hard fans were the, were the old ones. Which one do you think is going to incite more of a riot? Hey! Hey! That's, 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 that's what I'm looking for. really wanted to get back to the heavier side of, of the band. And um, I think to this point, um, that's what we're doing. The fans have been calling for it and they were in the mood to do it and that's, that's, how they, that's what they set out to do. We had to jam the songs out live get a vibe and, and allow the songs to develop that way. And that's not what happened. What am I even, I don't even know what I'm I listening to anymore. Like get the fuck out of my way. I think the vibe started out really good, but it just fell apart quick.
right here. Right, but that can't be fucking closed, kid. It, 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 it totally. It wasn't that. It was well, tick tick. Maybe it's just yeah. It was really difficult. Well, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm playing. Can't get him on the drums for nothing, but you start fucking trying to think he's playing the cover, and the next thing you know. It was difficult enough that we didn't, we stopped doing it together and we started doing it on our own. Signs of a, a long, hard 15 years together or whatever where you know you, you're getting sick of each other. Yeah, right, not too many fucking geniuses in here. <laughs> I know, there's only one. Oh, I know. <laughs> We're, actually, we're all actually complicated. I think everybody's complicated. It's not like just stained is complicated. All people are complicated. It takes you a while to really get to know somebody, you know. I mean, I've known these guys, I think it's been 16 years now. I can't believe I've been in a band for 16 years. I thought about that like two weeks ago. I was like, I can't believe I'm in a band for 16 years. I've never done anything for 16 years. Actually, I can think of a few things I've done for 16 years. It just kind of felt like I... Uh, Playing as a band it just didn't seem to really be be happening like that, and especially you know uh, Johnny was like you know I think I think we need to kind of do this separately. I was like, please let's just not do it. We tried it; it's not working. There's no magic in the room. There was not no magic happening. I couldn't pull the plug on that soon enough because everyone came in with a good. They came in with a right. good attitude, and it just slowly deteriorated. It's the truth. Again, that was another song that I had, uh, that I pretty much had together, arranged, and I don't think much changed on that one. That was one of the ones that I kind of brought in. I, I worked on that one with Johnny, I think, in Chicago, and again, came and we just started jamming on it, and everybody, you know, everybody kind of liked it. So that one had been kind of sitting around for a minute. When I heard Not Again, I said, that's, that's the track, and um, it has all the uh, all the things in the one song that make Stain the great group that they are and um, when we zeroed in on that as the single and started playing it for radio it was 100 percent across the board everyone was like this is exactly what we were hoping you would play for us and as we sit here today end of July um, early August the song is the fastest climbing um, single that Stain's ever had this one's a little more open seems like you could, as long as the words are there Certainly not a single. The chorus is not structured to be so. It's really like, I think it's good melody. And what you just showed me for the pre-chorus, I think is fine too. A little bit of space on the guitar, I think is fine. Let the guitar do its thing, sing in between, it's cool. I, don't, I won't do it that way. Let me do it again. Fuck off, okay? Catch I sang the wrong words I think Try singing the first half of the verse more like the second half Instead of taking the step Instead of going breaths it's just like taking the step and no, 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 give it a little more voice, a little right. less breath on it. All right, fuck wad. 
Put that in the DVD right there. That angry, condescending. I'm in the zone. Do you feel like you I'm somebody's folly? There's, you know, I think you could. I think you should look for an opportunity to drop something that makes it a little more real in there. It's all, it's all there. Don't, don't fucking, don't doubt. He knows I'm right. He's just being it, lazy. Tell me how much I fucking suck in between each take when nobody can hear it because it's coming through my fucking earphones. Yeah. And go back and do your fucking yeah, penis in your left. Click button with your right. Sending prick, this guy. <laughs> Represent. Is there anything else you want to do with the song? That's it. Done. Yeah. Let's go. To, let's write another song then. Something to remind you. Just kind of. One of those songs that just kind of came like a tidal wave. He changed it around a little bit, you know, just to suit what how he wanted to sing, and. Uh, you know, came up with some great lyrics that I guess, you know, one taked it and just, you know, killed it. I wrote it just kind of listening to the pieces that I needed to listen to. No, but you, we were playing the CD at the house? Well, I got a reference and then I, I didn't go to oh. the CD because of the arrangement. Yeah. The road to hell along the way is paved with good intention, so they say. And some believe that no good deed goes unpunished in the end, or so it seems. So when the day comes and the sun won't touch my face, Tell the ones who care enough that I finally left this place That's been so cold Look at my face All the stories it will tell I can't erase The road is long just one more song A little something to remind you when I'm gone When I'm gone Welcome to the party. Aaron was always really good at, I mean, I think that's his, his claim to fame. That's what he offers his audience is his honesty, his, his take about what he feels. And a lot of times, you know, the way he says how he feels rings a chord among his audience. The fans' appreciation of what it is that I do, they, it means more to me and it, and it, and it helps me and it's helped me in my life more than I could have ever possibly helped them in the words that I've said. You know, I never set out to try to help anybody. I still, that's not my path. I, I'm, all these lyrics over the, over the years, all the things that I've said over the years have all have all been for me. They've all been to get it off of my chest. And uh, by accident that this has all kind of happened the way that it, it has. And uh, because I read all those letters that are handed to me, I, I know that I've inadvertently helped a lot of people. 
with what it is that I had to say in order to get it off my chest. There was a, a time period during turn break the cycle, I think, kind of towards the end of it, that I lost it, I broke down, I, I freaking cried for like an hour, I couldn't, I couldn't read any more stories, I, I couldn't, I couldn't read any more letters, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it anymore, I couldn't, I didn't want to carry that burden. I didn't want that weight on my shoulders. That's not what I was trying to do. That's not... And, uh... You know, the, the letter that I had read that just completely sent me over the edge was... This kid wrote me a letter and his best friend had... who never had any interest in playing the guitar or singing or anything like that. He went out, he bought himself a guitar. He learned how to play outside and sing it. He recorded himself playing outside and singing it and then proceeded to hang himself to the song playing on a loop so that when his parents found him, they would hear him singing outside. And that was his suicide note, I guess, if you will. And, you know, that's not, that was never what that song was written for. That's not, it, it freaked me out so bad. It, it, it really fucked me up for a while. Uh, that riff that it goes into, um, I don't know, to me it's, I think it's like one of the heaviest riffs that I've ever written. You gotta be shitting me. Best take of my life. Right down the shitter. Should we do that little lead into the bridge uh, clean? Self-serving plan just. Hey, 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 that ain't toilet paper. <laughs> He's like, I got an itchy ass, man. Phil, oh, 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 wait a minute. What part are we going into? I thought we were just doing a chorus. Right. It's all perfectly right on. I, I know. About... I know. Well, I'm just, I'm just informing you so that you know. I, but I, you don't need to inform right. me, dude. I am a professional musician. I've done this a long time. I've recorded how many records now? How many times have I been in the studio? Okay. I know how to play to a click. No. 30, that's 33 milliseconds off the click. Jesus oh. H. Christ, 33 fucking milliseconds. Right, well, just so you know, like a good, a good... Uh, no, that's like a day in fucking... A good performance is usually within 5 or 10 milliseconds. Did you hear that? Underlying theme there? You know, if you show up and you're not putting your all in, or if your heart isn't in it, it'll show. You go to him, fucking look at that shit. Look what he had to do to your fucking drums to make it fucking decent enough for the record. It's actually worse than it looks because there are some hits where he hits a cymbal and it's 
in his kick drum, and they're off with each other. Certainly doesn't make me want to pay him fucking the same amount as what I'm making. <laughs> I wouldn't. I think you'd be. I think you would be foolish to do that. I feel like I am in a little bit of a tough position, and believe me, I'm trying to challenge these lyrics every step of the way. If I'm not really careful about how I make my suggestion, even if I know I'm right, if I'm not super careful about it, like if I tell him, I'll try this, he won't do it. You have to understand, I sit, I'm sitting here, all sorts of lyrics are going through my head. I've fucking said it all already. You know what I mean? I have fucking used every pain and feeling and and remorse and I've used every reference. I've done it already. Yeah? But you would never see hear it in the chorus. I'm still trying to get through to you, but I'm failing. You act like I'm not even here. My heart is breaking. Trying to see through your stare. It looks right through me. Laugh, because it's all I can do to keep from going crazy. You say, lie like I'm not even here, and then later on you say, pretend I'm not there. Like, hey, okay. you lie like I'm not even there, and I pretend I'm not here. All right. Instead of pretend I'm not there. I don't know why I thought about that, but I just, maybe it's, maybe it's cool. <sighs> I gotta keep my eye on this guy, man. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> Between me and the camera. Oh fuck. You'll see it in the DVD, all right? right. Why? I don't know. I didn't think there was anything wrong with the idea. At all. Thoughts? Impressions? Hate it? No, don't get me wrong. I like the verse. It, it's got to be sung differently. You can't have. I mean, it's exactly sounds like Alice in Chains. And so nobody can sing harmonies in the song anymore because Alice in Chains fucking did it. It's like no one can start a fucking phrase with "yeah" anymore because fucking Alice in Chains did it. Well, you know how many fucking bands have done it before? Alice in Chains ever did? It's like, come on, dude. Listen, the two things that Mike. His two concerns about that particular song were that he thought that the, the pre-chorus was too screamed out and he thought that the, the harmonies were too else in chains. That, it just fucking kills me. Every fucking person that's heard those fucking parts, every person I played those five fucking songs for, the parts that bother him are all the parts that everybody was like, what the fuck? When it fucking comes out of, yeah, you never felt this. Everybody's just like, oh my God. Right. And, can you I, turn, turn this off for a second? At this point, I like any melody. Put words and sing it down. Let's turn the thing in so that we can make everyone happy. 
buy some time. The people around me will agree that I have the ability to be a fucking asshole. It is never okay to just leave a fucking musical part. Every other band I can fucking think of. Look at fucking Helmet. Twenty fucking six times it goes gaku 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 and there's no fucking lyrics whatsoever and it goes through that whole fucking thing. It doesn't always have to have words. I have to change the psychology of it a little bit. He's not in a cooperative mood. Like is it like fucking necessary producer 101 that that even if what I'm doing is perfectly fine, you have to question it just to question it, just to throw off the creative fucking flow. Are you fucking retarded? All right, so fucking shut your fucking cock-eating pie hole and play the goddamn chorus again. It must suck to have to deal with me boiling over. Fuck that song. Let's just move on. We don't need to. There's we already no need, know what we're gonna. There's no need to fuck that song. There's no need for, no need for this to get blown up no, no. into this big fucking thing. No, no. What I'm saying all is, all I like, fucking said was, I feel like the fucking yes, the fine. verses should stay slamming. That's all I fucking. We're said. gonna do that. Aaron and I are the are the probably well, yeah, we're probably the two in the band that have always butted heads the most. I love how you listen. How could you think that? I That's was exactly just what you just said. I was just talking about the riff. How is that drums? The oh, riff. All right, you didn't say it. I thought you said. You I've been just, talking about the riff the whole time. You just said you just turned it into that. John and Aaron are oil and water. I mean, those guys. One guy can say it's a nice day out, and the other guy can go, "No, it's not." A slow picked fucking totally drop down. This part? Yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. But every section needs to No, it doesn't. It's never come to blows. Kind of surprised it hasn't. But, uh, I mean, it's definitely, uh, that's a tough relationship. Well, that uh, fucking song isn't uh, going any further okay. because of what you just fucking did. That's why. There needs to be separation. There, need, there just, there needs to be. All I'm saying is, no matter what, in a song, you need to have dynamics. And you know that. You know, vocally, yep. guitar-wise, drum-wise, whatever. Song drops it all out, needs to work. The song drops out to just about nothing. Look at Seven Words. Seven the, Words has, has the song dynamics. drops out. Uh, it's, you know, it really it just comes down to personalities. And, and I think we both just have strong personalities. See, I, I see that verse. You be a fucking girl. Everything can't just be yeah, though. That's not dynamic. And how is everything that? It's one fucking song. I remember back in the day, recording Break the Cycle, you know, John would start a song with a click, and as soon as he started the song, he'd, sh <clears throat> he'd shut the click off. And just to kind of have reference, you know, at the end of it, Josh and Ryan would turn the click back on just to see how close he stayed with the click, and it was perfect. And his playing this time around wasn't. Still the fucking people that go on Blabbermouth don't like me. They just don't. I do find that odd. That people will have the time or energy, or take the time or energy, to insult somebody they don't know about something they know nothing about. Nah, there's nothing that I could say to them. With what they're saying, under every single thing that's been posted on Blabbermouth, one of which was me reopening my daughter's school and, and, you know, taking all that money out of my pocket to cover the budget and everything else. And the comments underneath were just shredding me. I, I, another one was talking about me going over to Kuwait to play for the troops. And underneath it, in the comments, people were just destroying me. So, they obviously don't like anything that I've done and I don't understand why they waste their time 
it, don't listen to it. I mean, myself, I can't stand reading any of the stuff that people write about us. I, I don't, I stopped, I stopped a, a lot of years ago. Um, as much as it tortures me, I, I, I kind of need to know what the general consensus is. So from what I just read, fucking Stain has never put out a heavy record in their entire career. And then, uh, the fact that we're writing a heavy in your face record is laughable. Maybe I need to torture myself because I'm a creative and, and you know, creatives are usually inspired by some sort of torturous thing. Not everybody's gonna like you, you know? Not everybody's gonna have nice things to say about you. That's life, you know? Everybody has the right to form an uneducated opinion. But I have to stress the uneducated part. One of you, I think, it was the first song that we that we did, um, that we worked on. I was actually stumped on that song. Faceless chaps in who I am and what I've done, how little that you know. When you take it out and you listen to the guitars, the guitars to me sound heavier than the melody. So I think we should experiment with trying a melody that sounds as heavy as at least the guitars do. Okay. You know, so the origins of of the vocals for Wannabe, it was the, you're just a sellout, turncoat, pop star, pussy poser, rock star. That was, that was, that came out the first time that we were sitting with that song and trying to come up with lyrics for it, and then we kind of backburnered it and worked on some other stuff and came back to it. <laughs> this is, it's frustrating right now because I'm sitting here trying to think of fucking heaviness and brutality and... I'm starting to hate all the cigarettes and I haven't... In the middle of trying to come up with stuff for that, an entire country song, like chord progression, the melody, the, the, the lyrics came to me, everything came to me for this song that I have called 75. That couldn't have been more the polar opposite of what it was that I was trying to focus on. And, and that's where my fucking head was dragging me. It's nice. I could hear the fucking song and everything else, and uh, but I'm trying to focus on fucking stained, and my fucking mind is going fucking country. Going country. <laughs> At the top of the, I got push, shove, shackled, hold down, assault, chisel away, pressure, crush, and then I wrote down a fucking chord progression that I thought was the right progression, but it wasn't. It starts on E, and it couldn't have been the more polar opposite than what it was that I was thinking about, and it was that interruptive to have come out come out in its entirety I like it sorry kid creativity came out just came out in the wrong vein it happens just out of comic relief I looked up and I was like I'm selling records you basically there's, there's just no other you know I can't I, I gotta do it in this style, or I can't really fucking call call it out full on. So we're fucking rolling with it. I mean, look, if you say you're in your mama's basement with the Shih Tzu and peanut butter on your dick, that means I can't sing that. I, that can only be rapped, or you know, or or you know, scream rapped. And we all kind of laughed because of just at the thought of the concept of it. And the next thing you know the whole first verse was written and the whole song just kind of fell together and we laughed and, and had a great time the whole time we were writing it. And the left is giving you a rim job. 
<laughs> was it the plan for that song? Certainly not. But it just came out that way. It's totally to the fucking people that have nothing better to do but sit in their fucking mom's basement at fucking 40 years old, alternating between talking shit on the internet and jerking off. So, it fucking... Sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> There's really nothing I can do about it. But for some reason, I still like to torture myself with it. All right, start it again. Records. What is it that you do? Sitting in your mama's basement with a shit suit. Peanut butter on your dick, right hand going quick with your left hand giving you a rip job. So now you wanna talk about me? Whose name is on the marquee? You hate everything that you can't be. Here's the next one. <laughs> this is not subject matter, right? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't even matter. Let's just get to doing what we gotta do. I don't really fucking even care to hear them, to be honest with you. Well, I should still import the vocals so that it'll fit. So what we are doing, you okay, know, we, can, we can work around what's there. So. <laughs> Interesting. I have to write songs and music that Aaron wants to sing on. And if he doesn't like it, and I do, here I am with my, you know, standing there and it is what it is. I wouldn't expect you and Mike to always agree on parts or a guitar player and a singer in any band to always agree on everything anyway. You shouldn't expect that. I think that's unrealistic of you to sit back and think, Mike should just always agree with everything I do or not have an opinion. Right? You know what I mean? It's like, I'm sure. changing wrist because it, and you get to come up with this? Right. I mean, it's, come on. Sometimes he's too good. Sometimes he's got a, you know, it takes me who has nowhere near the musical, uh, you know, ability um, to dummy it up a little bit. I really respect Mike and what he brings to the table. Mike's a great player, man. Mike. Mike can play stuff, it would take me like three months to even get my fingers to be able to actually do that stuff and his fingering is just amazing. Very particular about his writing and, and um, you know, he won't even let us hear it until he, he feels it's ready to go. I would say hands down, he's put in more time than anybody on this record. My influence might be a little bit responsible for kind of keeping a leash on Mike over the years. I hate to use the word formula, but there was definitely things that I started doing over the years in writing records for the band that when I wrote the music for Tormented or Dysfunction, and even some of Break the Cycle, that I wouldn't lock myself into doing certain things a certain way. And it seemed like when I didn't do that, Aaron always wanted to go back. Everything had to be this way. Once we got a record deal, we kind of decided that the days of, of gratuitous guitar solos and things of that nature were, were, were kind of in the past. Well, he definitely has some good shredding abilities. They weren't always like mud shovel harmonics. There was some squeals and some just fucking crazy guitar. Like maybe we should make it sound modern. I think it was almost a trademark on the early stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Bottom was one of the songs that came from uh, me just sitting around with Johnny and he's like, oh man, you know, he used to make all these cool sounds on guitar. 
and I just went, I went gong gong, er, gong gong, gong er, and he's like, yeah, like, and, and it's really, we kind of started with that. It's a, a little thing I did in Crawl back in the day, but a little bit, it's a little bit different than the way I was doing it then. And uh, just making some cool noises and, you know, trying things a little bit differently. I guess Mike is the riff master and and I'm kind of the one that helps figure out how to put it all together right. I don't think either one of us have the ability to deliver the final product that we deliver every time without each other. To this day, you know, it makes me change these riffs and what you're talking about too, that Fred pointed out is that you have a guy that can actually sing. There's not many guys that can sing like that or right. use it. I think Aaron, Aaron's a Aaron's a great composer, singer, and the only thing I could, you know, for weakness, I, I just wish his work ethic was a little better. So man, during this process, I was, I was working my ass off. I had full on solo tours going. I had a new record that had just come out that was pulling me in every different direction. I was filming for a TV show. I was trying to be a dad somewhere in the middle of all of this, and uh, it was it was really tough balancing all of that. And uh, and I know that 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 caused a lot of of stress within the whole project. That. Uh, that probably didn't necessarily need to be there, but ironically ended up lending itself to the project as far as lyrical content and, uh, and just the energy in the room, which we were able to capture, kind of like we did on Dysfunction. Aaron was continuing to promote his solo record, which was taking off, and um, the, you know that that album had just come out in January of that year when he was starting to work with Stained, and so uh, he had other obligations, um, as is appropriate for his solo project, and so there was a lot of pressure, um, you know, in the Stained world, uh, particularly on Aaron to finish this record. Well, somebody had to agree on your on your side of the things. I mean, they they as when you were negotiating this deal, that wasn't. It was it was that or the highway. It was take these fucking terms, or we're not going to give you the waiver to put this fucking EP out. It's that simple. That was the deal. Well, you had to agree to it, so. Obviously, you agreed to it. But that was the deal. At that point, it was time for Aaron to take over and start writing uh, lyrics and vocal melodies. And, you know, anybody who works on music can tell you the hardest part of any song is the lyrical part and the vocal part and the melodic part of it. You've got the pressure from it being the last stained album in their contract, you've got the pressure from a deadline. And now, all that pressure is on Aaron's shoulders, and everybody's uh, turning to Aaron and going, when's it going to be soup? I'm just trying to do everything. Still loading. That's all I can do. I have in the back of my mind that this record does have to get done. And after yesterday, I realized that there is a financial incentive. We have a deadline we have to meet. And if we don't, then there's consequences. You know, and I think it goes beyond financial. I mean, is that a part of it? Of course it is. It's not, I don't think it's my job to tell Aaron, you know, you shouldn't be doing these tours right now. I don't, I don't know. No. I mean, it's my opinion. This record's difficult to make. Uh, you know, he has his solo thing. He's out playing gigs on weekends. Uh, his record just came out and it did, it did really well.
you know, and it, I'm, I'm very happy for him. I know it's something he's always wanted to do. Um, and there's some great songs on there. Um, but it makes making this record right now tough. Uh, you know, if he has gigs on weekends or, uh, I, I almost think it's anything else he can find other than doing, you know, he can, some hunting show or something. It's like, well, really this band's allowed all that to happen. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm usually pretty good about not showing my stress level, but yeah. I'm fucking stressing the fuck out right now. Well, because I'm, I'm 20 minutes from being at the absolute maximum two hours and the fact is, is that I leave today, and the fact is, is that the biggest issue that's been over the last few days is that, you know, they just want me home, they just want me there, and and here I am, about to leave to go to the airport at three o'clock, and I'm up here in the fucking studio. He had a week and a half to write stuff, and he came in, you know, like I didn't get anything done. We got to do it all now. Oh. You know that kind of thing. So a lot of it was rushed. He didn't put much thought or effort into it. Oh. What was he doing? The he was doing uh, his shows and then his hunting thing, or whatever. Through the doubt and the questioning and the... and, and just the turmoil that was taking place during the recording process. And at the end of it all, I, I, I proved everybody wrong. And I did it. And I didn't have to cancel anything. I didn't have to rework anything. And I left my schedule just the way that it was. And and really wrote some amazing melodies and lyrics when uh, when everybody else had completely lost faith in me. You're pathetic. You fucking weak. Oh, it's so funny the song Paper Wings was originally I had this this riff that sounded like it was off of Black Sabbath's Paranoid Because of the way this song is, you gotta resist the temptation to to fall into that blues guitar trap, mm -hmm. you know? Because then it just it won't be cool enough. Weird. I remember Johnny came to the studio one day and he's like, hey, "Everything Aaron sings over that just sounds bluesy. You can't." I go, well, "Let's, you know, let's. We all love this heavy, cool riff at the beginning. Let's rewrite the verse." We're going. We are going. Looks to me like you fucking run in your cock garage. In, in my mind, that section is what I wanted this whole fucking record to be like. Like fucking, like heavy. Like no denying, no, there's no fucking way that you can fucking say anything pussy like in any fucking way about it. He's just over there in the field. 100 yards, 150 yards. <laughs> He answered it. Yeah. So it's pre chorus, verse, pre chorus, verse, pre chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus, 
pre-chorus. <laughs> Oh my like, god, the what, the suggestion I just made to you is going to be so fucking unbelievably brutal. It's been so long since I've seen a fucking good mosh pit at a fucking stain show. It's gonna fucking right. be ridiculous. Yeah. Fucking complete and total fucking devastation. Where to go from that fucking intro to fucking down of go gato. Go, 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 gato! As that being the fucking verse. Holy fucking shit. How good is this riff, though? I, I hate to lose this. It's so badass. It's not as fucking badass as Battle go, go, gato! Now he wants to change everything around, and it's like. I and mean, it's probably one of my favorite, the, my favorite music that we've had so far in the record. And, uh, and it's tough when he just wants to change it around. And my thing is like, okay, well, if we're going to change it around, then sing something great over it so I can hear it. It could go way beyond. I want to try and make it a little bit more random. Yeah, I was thinking maybe the arrangement's a little bit straight. Maybe if we flashed it up a little <laughs> bit, threw some time changes maybe and some key changes in there. Yeah, instead of, instead of changing the key every measure, let's try and change the key every half measure. Or maybe every note. That would be perfect. Every note a different key. All this right. part is still heavy. It's heavy in an old other kind of way. You're delivering all kinds of heavy. You got the punch in the gut heavy. You've got the drag across the ground heavy. You've got the raging heavy. You're delivering every kind of heavy. You're saying just give me one kind of heavy, raging no, heavy. That's not. And I'm I'm saying there deliver isn't, heavy. There isn't a fucking song in this collection of songs yet that is just raging fucking heavy like fucking spleen or raw fucking straight through it. This is, there isn't one. This is a smorgasbord of heavy. I think it's going down the shitter once. Well, every fucking move we make, that's what I think. The arrangement's stupid. It's going back and forth to the same dumb parts. It used to have a cool flow. Where it stands right now, um, I'd rather not put it out. I, I just think that it's not as good as it was. And there's been a lot of times that I felt that about things. And I've not said anything, but this one's so bad I have to say something. I mean, it's just, it, it just doesn't sound good to me the way it is. Did you ever one minute think that now I'm gonna leave it the way he wants it just so he'll have a say so or why not? Um. Because I know how stubborn I can be. I mean, do I say this on camera that I, I still think it could be better the other way? I mean, I love the chorus and I think the verses are good, but I, I think the song could be better. And I mean, I, my opinion of that won't change. Um, I, think it's, I think it's a good song. I actually, I do really like it. Um, but we'll never know what it would sound like the other way. So what am I going to do? As somebody who understands music, how could you sit there with a straight face and try to argue what he's saying on his behalf to me? As someone who's always looking for less parts to write so he has less work to do, you should be, you should be enthusiastic that you don't want to put a pre-chorus in the song because that's one less part you got to write. I'm thinking of not finishing. Why? Mm, fucking over the whole thing. Yeah? Just bailing? Damn. Yeah. Mm. First off, I want to just check what date it is. It's probably April Fool's Day. <laughs> that wasn't even like a joke, though. That could have been very. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that <laughs> wasn't like a big stretch. I was like, really? <laughs> like, can I go home? <laughs> you're bailing? <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, well, I fucking can't, I can't blame you, bro. <laughs> if there's no tomorrow, burn your paper wings and learn to fly. In the last two days, it's amazing. In 48 hours, I wrote lyrics and recorded five songs. So, in the last. 48 hours before this record was due to be turned in, I think there were still five or maybe even six songs that needed to be finished lyrically and vocally. And 
Aaron went away with the tracks um, out to the country as his habit to clear his head and try to find you know some part of him that could put these lyrics down in paper and he returned to the studio with a blank notebook there was nothing there that came to him and as he describes it in the last 24 hours he sort of became an antenna for something that was out there and channeled it where do you see the future of stand I have no idea Time will tell what the future is. You know, obviously Aaron's successful with what he's doing, and I know he enjoys that. I mean, that's why we said, "Go do it." I mean, I know you enjoy doing that. You know, I mean, I will tell you that I, I have plenty of songs. I mean, there's, I think, over a record's worth of great material that we didn't use or touch on this. You know, right now, with some other really great ideas that aren't completed songs. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, you know. Great stuff could be potentially stained stuff. Um, and if it can't be stained stuff, it's going to be, you know, i got to use it somewhere else, I would imagine. So, it's not my first choice. I, mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that, that there's any particular future or lack of future with Stained. We're about to put out another record. At the end of that record, we'll, we'll then decide what it is that we're going to do. I mean, when it's time to go, it's time to go. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, everybody knows when our biggest record was. And it's, it hasn't been downhill, but it's been a slow trickle down from there. And that's fine. I'm not going to cry. I'll look back with fond memories. And it's been very successful. And if it ended today, I'd still be happy. I think, you know. You'll probably see it in some of the lyrics in the songs. They're weary. It's been a long road. <laughs> it's definitely affected everybody. It has been a long road for them. And uh, I think that that's the hardest part. You know, they're making their, what, seventh album? I understand and I sympathize with them. They, it is hard. It was very stressful. And I... <laughs> I think it's probably the hardest record that we've ever made, at least for me. I think ultimately led to um, us making a change as far as the drummers go. And, uh, you know, I guess not really seeing, not on the same page, you know, as far as, you know, with John. And, uh, you know, it's been 17 years. It was. Uh, I don't know, it was something that weighed on me for a long time, uh, that decision that we had to make. And, uh, you know, look, we tried to work things out and sometimes things can't work out. And, you know, it appears as of today sitting right here that, it, you know, that's where it's going to stay. It hit me when John was out of the band when we started practicing this week with somebody else. I mean, that was really... You know, and it's been it's been pretty emotional even, you know, going through these rehearsals and leading up and we have our first show tomorrow without him. I think most of us were all fighting each other for the same common goal, which was to make the best fucking record that we could make. Well, sometimes it just, it, it, it takes conflict to, to create the best thing that you can have. I think it's just a great return to form for the band. I think it's the record that, one, they wanted to make, two, that they needed to make, and three, they did make. And I think the fans are going to respect that, fans are going to appreciate that, fans are going to hear that when they listen to it, and they're all going to go out and see them in concert because they're going to want to hear these songs played live. And I expect a nice long run from this album. Very exciting. It's been a a long, hard road to get this thing done. Um, looking back, though, I'm, I'm extremely proud of the way it came out. Like this is, you know, like Dysfunction 2011. You know, it's. Uh, I think it's fresh. I think it's for us, and uh, it kind of went back to where we where we started.
up, man? Get away from me, I think I might throw up. <laughs> Get away.